Hi, I'm Paul Ranney from Community Church, and today I'd just like to uh, go over a short devotional that I found quite interesting in, in a book I was reading that um, actually talks, kind of dissects the Lord's Prayer a little bit and um, explains a good way that we can use the, um, the pattern of the Lord's Prayer in our prayer life to kind of model and help us along if we, we find that we're having any trouble uh, praying which uh, occasionally comes comes my way, and I can always sometimes use a good uh, a good proven model to to use in my prayer life. Um, so this is uh, using the Lord's Prayer because, as we know, Jesus um, actually used this prayer um, in Matthew um, to instruct the disciples after they ask them, "Lord, teach us how to pray." He went and he and he said, "This is how uh, you you should pray." It actually is more accurate. It would be more accurate to call it the disciples' prayer, because of course Jesus wasn't praying this prayer because of course Jesus never sinned, uh, so he had no reason to ask for forgiveness, as we do in the Lord's prayer. Um, but we call it the Lord's prayer, and that's what it's better known by. Um, to better understand this prayer, we can break it down into two sets of petitions. So there's going to be three petitions in each set and two sets that make up the Lord's Prayer for a total of six different petitions that are contained in the prayer. So it's chock full uh, of, of very powerful uh, parts of, of our prayer. Uh, in the first three petitions, focus on the glory of God. So our Father in Heaven, we recognize that we are addressing a holy God who sees us as his children. Hallowed be thy name. So this is beginning our prayers with reverence and praise for who God is. This will enable us to put our needs or our problems in their proper perspective. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is asking God for his will to rule our life. Uh, we cannot pray, thy will be done, until we pray, my kingdom go. In other words, I'm letting go of what I think is my kingdom, and I'm offering it to God for his uh, kingdom to come. The second set of three petitions focus on our personal needs. Give us this day our daily bread. This tells God of our physical and our personal needs. Remember that scripture tells us that God will provide for all of our needs. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is confessing our sins to God. Psalm 68 verse 18 says, If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So if we are clinging to some sin, our prayer life will suffer. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is recognizing our, our inclination to fall into sin. And we are praying that the opportunity to sin will not lead us to committing that sin. So we should make it a point to include these important aspects in our, in our personal prayers. We can use each one of these uh, types of petitions in our prayer life to kind of give us a well-rounded um, uh, uh, prayer to God in which we're including all of the important things that um, Jesus has told us is a good thing to include while talking and uh, listening to God. By doing so, we will begin to understand how immense our God is and how small our problems are in comparison. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for uh, giving us instructions, giving your disciples instructions and and, and giving us instructions on how best to pray. Sometimes praying can be difficult, God. I think we all suffer sometimes from prayer block. And this is a wonderful, wonderful way of becoming more comfortable in our prayer life again, is, is in just uh, remembering the important petitions, the important aspects of what it is that that Jesus found important in prayer. He found this important important enough to instruct his disciples. We ask for strength and wisdom and guidance in our prayer life in the future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you.